what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so i'm going to check out 10 freakiest coincidences in wwe wrestling it should be a very interesting video appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into this relates one, to a seeming remarkable string of events or circumstances that have no obvious connection with each other other when it comes to wwe there have been several coincidences that seem too deliberate to be labeled as coincidences but with wwe producing hours upon hours of tv each and every week not everything can be planned out years in advance mm -hmm. join us now as wrestlemania looks at 10 other biggest coincidences in wwe be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive links subscribe to wrestlemania if you haven't already Number 10, Triple H's pay-per-view matches in 2003. In 2003 was a bizarre year for Triple H. A lot of the fan base was sick of him dominating the main event scene and this was the year in which the quote-unquote reign of terror phrase was born. Mm -hmm. One of the craziest coincidences from this calendar year related to the game himself was for every pay-per-view match he competed in during the respective year, he would face at least one star from WCW. At the Royal Rumble and No Way Damn. Out events, he faced Scott Steiner. At WrestleMania 19, he collided with Booker T. At Backlash, he competed in a six-man tag, which his opponents including Booker T and Kevin Nash. For the next several pay-per-view events, That's the right. game would face Nash. This included a Hell in a Cell match uh -huh. at the Bad Blood event. At SummerSlam, Triple H would face off against a number of ex-WCW stars inside the Elimination Chamber, including Chris Jericho, Kevin Nash, and Goldberg. For the rest of 2003, the game would find himself in pay-per-view matches with Goldberg, culminating in a triple threat match at the Armageddon pay-per-view. Yeah. Perhaps WWE wanted to crush WCW stars so bad that they had the game do the dirty work. Number 9, Edge's Day. That could be a thing, too. Uh, I've never even really paid attention to that, so that, that is pretty interesting that actually could be a vince mcmahon driven like storyline like a hidden storyline that people aren't really too much paying attention to like defeating uh old wcw guys that that's a possibility debut match a wwe hall of famer edge had his first televised match for wwe in june of 98 against jose estrada jr the match wasn't the picture-perfect debut Edge wanted, as during the match, Edge performed a somersault senton from the ring to the outside, legitimately breaking Estrada's neck. Oh, What's interesting no. about this debut match was that it was a similar injury that forced Edge to initially retire wow. in 2011. Edge had severe neck problems, and this meant that Edge had to hang up his boots for the next nine years. It's a weird coincidence, that's yeah. for sure. A bit of fun trivia from Edge's debut match is that the first move he would hit in the match would be a spear. This would obviously go yeah, on to become his iconic crazy. finishing <laughs> move, but it's fascinating that Edge's first move in WWE was the move that was going to take him out. Number 8, Triple Damn. H's Pedigree. The Pedigree is one of the most popular finishing moves of all time. It was the perfect finisher for the game and it's hard to imagine the multi-time world champion using any other finisher. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, a crazy coincidence about the move itself is that it just so happens to look like a H. Yeah, when Triple H sets up the move, it perfectly resembles a letter. Was this deliberate or was it a complete accident? We're going with know. a complete coincidence. Number seven. I would probably go with a coincidence on that. I don't think it was planned or whatnot. Maybe it was, but it doesn't, doesn't seem like it. Paul Bearer's perfect profession. A Paul Bearer is one of the most beloved managers of all time, and it's hard to imagine The Undertaker's character working so well without Bearer at his side. Mm -hmm. A mind-blowing fact about Bearer was that he was contacted by WWE to become The Undertaker's sinister manager. He was already a licensed mortician. Yeah. In the late 70s, Bearer realized that he needed a backup in case his wrestling aspirations fell through. And that's when Bearer obtained a degree in mortuary science from San Antonio College. There was no other individual that could have been selected to play The Undertaker's oh, manager. No. Perfect. There was a true coincidence that Bearer happened to have the real life credentials to deliver yeah. such an ominous persona. And that's what makes that even a little bit more kind of creepy if you want to think about it because they actually hired him to be that type of voice and figure for The Undertaker when he was actually doing that on the side. It's kind of creepy. Number six, the WrestleMania coincidence. A WrestleMania events that come at the end of a decade-long run of WrestleManias are usually special. 
WrestleMania 10, 20, and 30 all felt huge, and they were felt even bigger than typical WrestleMania events. Mm -hmm. There's a crazy coincidence though when it comes to each of the three respective WrestleMania events, as WWE have opted to reward a popular babyface with the world title in the main event. Mm. This doesn't just relate to any popular babyfaces, the three babyfaces in question are all technical wrestlers who were well known for their in-ring work. That's the crazy. first instance of this is at WrestleMania 10. Here, Bret Hart overcame Yokozuna to capture the WWE title. Then at WrestleMania 20, Chris Benoit defeated yeah. Triple H and Shawn Michaels to win the world title. And finally, at WrestleMania 30, That's crazy. Daniel Bryan defeated Randy Orton and Batista to become WWE. That, I would have never really put that together. That's Now, that is crazy. I don't think that was planned. These are guys that Vince normally wouldn't put at the top of the card, but they be they rose to the top of the card. The fans appreciated and loved them. You know, so that that's wild when you think about it. WWE World Champion. Do WWE plan out these in advance, or is this just a complete coincidence? It'll be interesting to see how WrestleMania 40 goes off the air. Yeah. The show ends with a talent such as Johnny Gargano or Chad Gable winning the world title gold. Then questions <laughs> will arise as to whether WWE have a concrete plan when it that. comes to their decade anniversary event. Number five, the last matches of two legends. The passing of Eddie Guerrero in 2005 hit everyone hard. Guerrero was beloved by fans and his colleagues, and he is forever cemented as one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Mm -hmm. Guerrero would have his final ever match in November 2005 on SmackDown against Mr. Kennedy. In a bizarre coincidence, Kennedy also had the final match for another wrestling legend, this time with the former Intercontinental that Champion is Umaga. Wild. Kennedy wrestled Umaga in November of 2009 and the match took place on the Hulkamania tour, so unfortunately it wasn't televised. Oh. But it's quite strange that Mr. Kennedy would be the last opponent of each of these respective legends. That's Number wild. Four, the Shield's twist of fate. Survivor Series 2012 is mostly known for the debut of The Shield. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose interfered in the main Great event fashion. WWE title Legendary match, faction. and the rest they say is history. The Shield will become one of the most universally praised stables of the past two decades, mm -hmm. and it's no surprise that all three men became elite main event level talents in their own right. Mm -hmm. The 2012 Survivor Series took place at the Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana. What's interesting about this particular arena was that it was the exact same arena that The Shield would disintegrate in. Wow. On the June 2nd, 2014 edition of Raw, Rollins I didn't know that. back on the Shield teammates, and the fact that this took place in the exact same venue as the group made their initial debut. That's very interesting. I don't know if they planned that one out. That I did not know that. That it comes full circle. That's crazy. That's so crazy. It was a huge coincidence. Now, it was believed to be a total coincidence, but this coincidence gets even crazier when The Shield reunited in 2017 on Not War. Not the same The place. reunion just so happened to take place in Banker's Life Fieldhouse. Once once again, this arena had been the location for another one of the trio's pivotal moments. Nah, okay. When you say that may, it has to be planned. Just a little bit. There has to be some type of planning there, because come on now. Number three, Triple H's quad tear. Uh, Triple H yeah. tearing his quad live on Raw was a hard watch, but it was ultimately great to see a triumphant Triple H return on the January 7th, 2002 edition of Raw. Mm -hmm. And what is noteworthy about the date of the game's return was that five years later at the New Year's Revolution pay-per-view, the game once again yeah. suffered the exact same injury on his other leg. Triple H was teaming with Shawn Michaels against Rated RKO, and the game's injury should have sent the match into total chaos. Thankfully, the three other wrestlers in the ring managed to keep it together, mm -hmm. and in particular, Shawn Michaels cemented himself as a ring general as he took control and called an audible to keep the match flowing as Facts. well as humanly possible. <laughs> Number two, the Which Royal Rumble runner-up. The Royal Rumble matches that took place between 2005 to 2010 all had something in common. Each of the respective matches, the runner-up of the match would still compete for the world title at WrestleMania. In 2005, John Cena was the runner-up and would ultimately face JBL for the title at WrestleMania 21. In 2006, Randy Orton was the runner-up and he would face Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio for the title yeah, at WrestleMania that is 22. True. Wow. In 2007, Shawn Michaels came up short, but he would still face John Cena for the title at WrestleMania 23. But it doesn't stop there. In 2008, Triple H was the runner-up but still competed for the title at WrestleMania 23. That is in 2009, wild. Triple H yet again was a runner-up and actually managed to walk into WrestleMania 25 as defending champion. Uh -huh. Finally, in 2010, John Cena was a runner-up and he would later challenge Batista for the WWE title at WrestleMania 26. 
In 2011, this coincidental Rumble placement trend would come to an end, as a runner-up in that match, Santino Marella oh, would no. fail to compete for a world title at WrestleMania 27. Oh, yeah. And number one, Kane's seven years of bad luck. A Kane's unmasking in 2003 was one of the most infamous moments in WWE history. What is particularly interesting about the episode of Raw that featured Kane unmasking was that shortly before he unmasked, Kane smashed a mirror backstage. Now there's a superstition mm, surrounding a broken yeah. mirror that a person responsible for the mirror smashing will then have seven years of bad luck. Weirdly, <laughs> is that the reason why Baron Corbin has been booked the way he has before he went? back to NXT. I think they've been booking them pretty solid in NXT, but on the main roster. Is that the reason? Breaking glass? I don't know. By coincidence, probably, this was actually the case for Kane as he was unable to win a world title for the next seven years, but just a few weeks after the seven years were up, Kane would win his second world title in <laughs> the WWE. Odds of that happening. The 2010 Money in the Bank pay-per-view would see Kane cash in his Money in the Bank this. briefcase on Rey Mysterio to finally win his second world title in WWE. How's that for a coincidence? But there you have it, folks. Ten I remember watching that when that happened. I was like, oh, whoop, GG's, Ray. You, you just can't catch a break when it comes to world titles, Ray. You just can't catch a break. But I don't know how true that is. I, I think that's more so on the booking side. They didn't really know what to do with Kane after his initial unmasking when he was, you know, when he became this unstoppable monster that he was heavily featured on raw he was destroying everybody that's when they you know had an idea of where to go with him but i don't think they really had any intentions of making him the the top champion and this dominant threat with the championship i think it was just so to freshen up his character make him a monster but not really put the the title on him anytime soon so comment down below let me know which are some of well, from this particular video, some of the weirdest like coincidences you feel like you've seen in this particular video. I think the WrestleMania ones, for each 10 years, a technical wrestler, a wrestler, you know, on the more smaller side, but just they, mo they mainly focus on the technical aspect. I think that's crazy. So I don't know. WrestleMania 40, will we have a technical wrestler? finish the story i don't think we consider cody as this technical genius in the ring but i don't know <laughs> i don't know we'll we'll see or will it be gunther because you can consider gunther as more of a technical specialist will it be gunther's time to win a world championship at wrestlemania 40 that sounds a little bit more believable so y'all let me know some other coincidences that y'all found in this video to be the most interesting or the creepiest freakiest whatever you want to call it but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k i am still the undisputed youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace